What up, though? You have the power to change your mind. You have the power to control your mind. You have the ability to program your mind. If you don't program your mind, someone or something will program it for you. I'm from Flint, Michigan, specifically the Evergreen Regency townhomes on the south side. Typical story of a young black man. You know, I grew up in the hood. By the time I was 12, I was smoking weed. At 13, I started selling weed. And at 14, I got arrested for the first time for a felony conviction. And by 15, I got shipped to an all boys reformatory school in Conquerville, Pennsylvania called Glen Mills School for Boys. Glen Mills turned out to be a blessing in disguise. But by the time I was 16, I got my GD. I took the ACT test the first time I scored a 21. I learned a vocation. I was into optometry. And instead of becoming an optician or an optometrist, I set my goal higher on becoming an ophthalmologist. My goal was to go to Ferris State University because they had the Michigan School of Optometry. I also found out I had a talent for running track and cross country. I was the captain of distance track and I became the captain of cross country. And one of my counselors told me, he was like, Alvin, if you just stay here and graduate, you can go to any college that you wanna go to for free. I ain't no fool now, I'm like, full ride scholarship to college, sign me up. And that's what I was doing, but I blew it. I ended up getting kicked out the school and I got sent home. My pride got in the way. It was a situation where my pride got in the way and I let this opportunity slip through my fingers. So I found myself back in the Regencies, back doing the same thing, back selling drugs. And my mom, she saw what was happening so she rushed me off to Saginaw Valley State University because I had got accepted to this college. So I'm living on a dorm at Saginaw Valley State University. And for the first three months, I had straight A's. But my mind was programmed to the block. My mind was programmed to the hood. And all I could think about was money. My phone kept ringing. People calling me like, I got a hundred. I got a hundred. I'm like, man, I'm in Saginaw. And one weekend, I packed up all my stuff and I went home. I just quit school. I'm like, man, I'm done. I'm trying to get money. And my mom's found out and went ballistic. But I was like, it's cool, mom. She kicked me out. I was like, it's cool. I'm out here. Like, I'm good. And I caught my first felony as an adult when I was 18. By the time I was 21, I got arrested on my 21st birthday. I had racked up all kind of felonies. I was on the run. I was violating probation. And I finally got arrested on my 21st birthday. And I remember waking up in level four prison and I could see the sun rising over the double razor wired barbed wire fences. And I thought to myself, how you go from SVSU to SRF? You went from Saginaw Valley State University to Saginaw Regional Facility. And instead of spending three years in college, guaranteed to get your degree, now you gotta spend the next three years in here where you can't learn nothing but how to be a better criminal. And man, I came up with this plan. I started reading all kind of books. I started feeding my mind. And then I got out. And when I got out, before I got out, my mom, she moved down to Florida and pops moved down here to Georgia. And I made it all, I made, I made parole. And my parole officer asked me like, you know, where are you going? You gotta have somewhere to stay when we let you out. And I was like, I'm going back to Flint. <laughs> I go back to Flint, Michigan, and I start doing the same exact thing. I start hanging with the same people. I started selling drugs. And I finally made it off parole. By the skid of my teeth, I made it off parole. And I thought to myself, this is the first time in 13 years that you've been off probation. You don't have to go see a probation officer. You don't have to drug test. You don't have to ask permission to leave the state. And I was like, if you stay here, you're gonna be locked back in. You might get murdered. You might go back to prison. And 
I was just like, you know what? I'm out, man. I'm out of here, man. <laughs> the, the, the way things is going and my track record, I was like, yo, I'm out of here. And I know there's a lot of people in my hood like, you know, scared. Like, man, he's scared, man. We ran him up out of here. But see, they ain't, they ain't know what all I went through mentally. They ain't know what all I went through physically. And they didn't know what all I went through spiritually. And I decided to go ahead and move down here to Georgia. My brother talked me into moving down here. And it changed my life, man. I started working at McDonald's. <laughs> I started working at Lane McDonald's. I'm, I'm, my pride was so much in the way because I'm like, I'm flipping burgers. And I'm like, look at you, Vino. You done moved down here <laughs> and you flipping burgers. Big Vino. Big dope boy Vino down here flipping burgers. And I had to tell myself, man, shut up, man. I'm free. And I can do anything I put my mind to. If I can make it in Flint, I can make it anywhere. And I just start grinding and grinding. I start serving. My goal was to make it into this fine dining restaurant because I'm like, yo, that's where the money at up there. And I finally made it into fine dining. And then I, I learned about the, the sommelier. I see them sniffing the wine. And I'm like, man, I'm like, man, you can't do that. <laughs> man, that's for the white boys, man. You know you can't do that. And I'm like, what? Now my name Vino, man. Give me that wine. Give me that. <laughs> I failed. I failed the first test, yo. I failed the first test, but I went back and I passed it. And then I started studying for the second test and I failed it the first time. And I went back again and I passed it. And man, I just started looking over my life and, you know, where I came from and where I am now. And I'm not where I want to be. For real, for real. I only get paid $2.13 an hour. <laughs> you feel me? But you know, it's better than looking over my shoulder. I feel free. I can be myself. I basically reinvented myself. You have the power to change your mind. You have the power to control your mind. You have the ability to reprogram your mind. If you don't reprogram your mind, someone or something will program it for you. Peace, y'all.